This video intends to help grade 7 learners enrolled under the modular distance learning to understand and answer the tasks and activities in their English 7 module. Please follow and hold your module while watching this video and be ready with your pen and paper to write down the answers in the given tasks and activities. Come and join me as we explore the different activities and tasks intended for this week. So just like last week, I will be using the English 7 Pivot for a Learner's Material which was published by DepEd Calabarzon. For this week's topic, we have the past and past perfect tense. My full instructional video on this lesson was uploaded on my YouTube channel. This lesson focuses on grammatical features of the past and past perfect tenses. This lesson highlights a clear distinction between the two and how they interact in forming clear and coherent sentences. At the end of this module, you are expected to indicate past actions using past and past perfect tense of the verb, use the past and past perfect tenses correctly in varied contexts, and show understanding of the past and past perfect tenses. So for learning task number one, the instruction is in your notebook, copy and solve the crossword puzzle below. Okay, so ang gagawin nyo, you're going to copy the given crossword puzzle and then the answers should be the past tense form of the following verbs. So for across, we have this. For example, in number 2, find. So nasan ba yung number 2 dito? So this one is the across. Okay, so you're going to identify the past tense form of the verb find. So diba, found siya. So F-O-U-N-D. And then, sa down naman, this part. Ayan, so pababa. So, past tense ng rice. So, we have rose. R-O-S-E. So, kailangan lang familiar kayo sa lahat ng past tense form ng mga verb na yan. But, take a look on number 11. Ang nakalagay dyan, lost. Tapos, open and close parenthesis, base form. So, ang i-identify nyo, since past tense na yung lost, i-identify nyo kung ano yung base form niya. Okay, ano yung present tense ng past tense na lost? So, for learning task number 2, the instruction is, in your notebook, copy and answer the statements below by boxing the past perfect tense, circling the past uh, simple past tense, and underlining the time expression used in each sentences. Meron siyang uh, example, kaya lang wala yung... Um, Past perfect at saka yung simple past. May underline lang yung time expression which is before. So halimbawa, dito sa example natin, ang ating past perfect tense is itong um, had told. So lalagay nyo siya ng box. And then ang ating simple past is itong was. So you're going to uh, encircle it. So again, ang ating past perfect sa example ay yung had told. And then we have was as our simple past tense and the time expression used is this before. So from this example, magkakaroon na kayo ng pattern or palatandaan how to identify the past perfect tense and the simple past tense. Simple past and past perfect tenses. Simple past tense of the verb is used to express an action that happened and ended in the past. For regular verbs, Past tense verbs end with D or ED, while irregular verbs form their past usually by either changing or retaining their spelling. Commonly, simple past is signaled by time indicators in the past like last week, yesterday, a year ago, etc. Examples, Victoria and Hilario visited their grandparents yesterday. Adoration and Mauro bought grocery items. So, tandaan nyo lang ha, pag simple past tense, action na nangyari na. So, meron tayong mga time indicators para mag-signal mag na the action had already happened. Like yesterday, ayan, sa so mga examples. Okay? 
Now, pag sinabi natin simple past tense, meron tayong two forms, yung regular verb at saka yung irregular verb. So, pag sinabi natin regular verb, madali lang yan. From base form of the verb, we simply add D or ED or we change Y to I and add ED. Pag sinabi natin irregular verbs, from the base form of the verb, binabago natin yung spelling o kaya naman nire-retain natin. Halimbawa, sa regular verb, tingnan niyo yung example na uh, Victoria and Hilario visited their grandparents yesterday. So, ang ginamit nating past tense dyan na word is visited, which is a past tense of the base form of the verb visit. So, from the word visit, we simply add ed para maging past tense siya. So, that is an example of regular verbs. Pag sinabi naman natin na irregular verbs sa number 2, yung bought. Diba? So, ang base form niya ay buy. So, from b-u-y na base form naging bought. Okay? So, we change the spelling. Now, ano naman po yung example ng uh, irregular verbs na hindi na babago yung spelling? So, halimbawa, the verb put. Wala namang uh, past tense na putted. O kaya naman the verb heat. Wala namang past tense noon na heated. So, those are examples of irregular verbs na nare-retain natin yung spelling from base form to its past tense form. So, let's proceed to past perfect tense. Past perfect tense narrates past actions and events. A sentence that uses past perfect tense provides two actions in the past wherein the first past action or condition is completed ahead of another past action. It is usually formed using the following structures. So, ito siya. Had plus past participle form of the verb. Examples. Mary had eaten her breakfast before Juanito asked her to do so. In the given example, both actions happened in the past. However, one action took place before another one happened. In this context, the past perfect tense portrays an earlier action before another action happened as portrayed by the simple past tense. There are time expression used in indicating past perfect tense. After, as soon as, the moment that, and until are used before the past perfect tense. While before, when, and by the time are used before the simple past. Okay, so pag sinabi natin past perfect tense, past tense din siya. Kaya lang, the difference is, Ito yung action na mas naunang natapos or nangyari bago pa yung isang action na nangyari in the past. Okay? So, sabi dyan, past perfect tense narrates past actions and events. A sentence that use or uses past perfect tense provides two actions. So, sa two actions na yon, yung action na naunang natapos in the past, yun yung past perfect tense natin. Ngayon, ang past perfect tense, ang structure niya ay had plus past participle form of the verb. Tatandaan nyo lang, pag perfect tense, ang main verb niya ay palaging past participle. So, halimbawa, sa verb natin na ang base form ay eat, ang past tense niya ay ate, ang kanyang past participle ay eaten. So, ang gagamitin nyo yung eaten, had plus eaten had eaten. You're not going to use had ate. Okay? So, another one. If we have the base form visit, okay, ang past tense niya ay visited. Ano po ang kanyang past participle? So, since ang visit or visited is an example of regular verb, ang kanyang past participle ay visited pa din. Okay? So, you're going to use had visited. So, dapat talaga you are familiar with uh, the verb conjugation, specifically or specially uh, with irregular verbs. Kasi wala naman magiging problem pag sa regular verbs. Kasi pag regular verbs, yung past and past participle pareha, parehas lang. Uh, so it ends with ed or ed or ied lang. Alright? Unlike ng irregular verbs na sometimes from the base form, uh, past tense and past participle na babago yung spelling. Just remember that past perfect tense, okay, 
action siya na mas naunang natapos before another past action happen in the past. So, halimbawa, um, bago kayo nag-aral or bago kayo nagsagot ng inyong module, ano yung una nyong ginawa? Okay? Ano yung una nyong ginawa? So, that is what we call the past perfect tense. So, for your learning task number 3, the instruction is, choose the correct past perfect tense of the verb in each sentence. Write your answers in your notebook. So, maybe you can have your answers only on this part. Okay? So, what you're going to do is just choose the correct past perfect tense form of the verb. Just remember the structure of past perfect tense. Ano nga ulit yon? We have had plus past participle form of the verb. Now, take a look on item number one. The witness had testified, had testifying, had testified before the court adjourned. Take a look on the first option. We have had plus testify. So, meron tayong auxiliary na had, but then ang kapartner niya ay hindi naman past participle, kundi base form. So, hindi siya yung answer. And then, we have had testifying. So, we have auxiliary had, but then, ang kapartner niya is a verb that ends in ing, or what we call progressive tense. So, hindi rin siya yung sagot. Okay? And then, we have had testified. Had plus uh, past, perf uh, past participle form of the verb. Kasi yung testified is past participle of the base form testify. So, the correct answer is had testified. Now, try to work on items number 2 to 5. So, for learning task number 4, the instruction is give the past perfect tense form of the verbs in the parenthesis. Write answers in your notebook. So, answers only naman. Dito, answers only ulit. But then, wala na kayong choices. Okay? Ang gagawin nyo lang is to give the past perfect tense of the verb na nandun sa parenthesis. So, again, tandaan the uh, structure of past perfect tense which is had plus past participle. So, take a look on item number 1. After I blank Helen Keller's story of my life, I prepared a report on it. So, the verb inside the parenthesis is read. Okay? Read. So, that is an example of a verb in irregular form. Okay? So, how are you, we going to do it? So, we have had plus past participle form. Ano ba yung past participle form ng read? Diba ang base form niya ay read, ang past tense niya ay read, so therefore, ang kanyang past participle is also read. So, the correct answer is had read. Okay? You're not going to change the spelling. So, that, that's the answer in number 1. So, work on items number 2 to 5. So, for learning task number 5, the instruction is, in your notebook, copy and complete the dialogues below. Okay? So, kukopihin niyo muna yung dialogue and then you're going to complete it how? By constructing sentences that will answer the given question. So, do not forget to apply the past and past perfect tense this time. So, hindi na kayo uh, mag-identify kung ano yung past tense ng ganitong word or ano yung past tense ng or past perfect tense ng ganitong word. But then, you're going to construct sentences. Okay, for example, in number 1, what household chores had you done when mother arrived? Ibig sabihin, ano yung natapos or nagawa mong gawaing bahay bago pa man dumating yung nanay mo? Okay, for example, um, I had mopped the floor when mother arrived. Meaning to say, nakapag mop na ako ng sahig bago pa man dumating yung nanay ko. Okay, so try to construct your own sentences answering the questions from 1 to 5. So, to sum it up, simple past tense of the verb is used to express an action that happened and ended in the past, while past perfect tense narrates past actions and events. A sentence that uses past perfect tense provides two actions in the past, wherein the first past action or condition is completed ahead of another past action. There are time expression used in indicating past perfect tense. After as soon as, the moment that, and until are used before the past perfect tense, 
while before, when, and by the time are used before the simple past. So let's proceed with learning task number 6. The instruction is, in your notebook, copy and answer the statements below by boxing the past perfect tense, circling the simple past tense, and underlining the time expression used in each sentences. So it is same with your learning task number 2. Okay, so you're going to copy the sentences from 1 to 15 and then you're going to identify which is the past perfect tense. How? By simply boxing it. Okay, and then encircle the simple past and then you're going to underline the time indicator or time expression used in each sentences. So we are now in the last activity for this week, learning task number 7. The instruction is, in your notebook, copy and complete the dialogues below. Using the pattern, indicate the appropriate use of simple past and past perfect tense. Now take a look on the given pattern. Okay? I had finished my assignments when my mom arrived. Ibig sabihin, nakatapos na gumawa ng assignment si Tessa bago pa man dumating yung nanay niya. Okay, next. My mom had arrived before dad cooked for our dinner. Big sabi nito, nakalating na yung nanay ni Meno bago pa man nakaluto ng hapunan yung kanyang tatay. Next, dad had cooked for our dinner before we watched TV. So, ibig sabihin, nakaluto na ng hapunan yung tatay ni Tessa bago pa sila manood ng TV. Ngayon, ang gagawin nyo, dudugtungan nyo yung we had watched TV. So, ano yung sumunod na nangyari bago kayo uh, after nyong manood ng TV? So, halimbawa, we had watched TV before the visitor came in. Okay? So, yun, dudugtungan nyo lang siya. Ayan, so basta kailangan, the action that was completed first before another action took place should be in the past perfect tense. Okay? Yung naunang action, dapat past perfect tense siya. Tapos yung sumunod, dapat simple past tense siya. And this is the end of our session for the given tasks and activities for this week about the past and past perfect tense. So I hope that this video will help you to accomplish your tasks and activities. Thank you!